One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his teardown lab. More calculators. And if you hear noise in the background that sounds like my house is being strafed by aeroplanes, it is because uh, I live in an area where there's lots of small airfields and military bases, and they bloody love to sort of fly around doing loop de loops and <laughs> type actions across the house. Here is a Casio FX 82L, and uh, Apparently it's a bit dead and it does seem a bit dead. I'm just looking at a bit of paper. They've got a bit of paper saying what it is. A Casio FX82L battery leakage, two AAs, but it takes six screws to access. Yeah, we all love six screws to access. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's crack on, shall we? Got a lot of these calculators. Calculators up the wazoo. I don't know um, how much enthusiasm you can sort of have for calculators. I uh, I don't know if I've got massive amounts of enthusiasm for calculators. It's certainly a lot less than sort of Nintendo Game & Watch LCT type games, but they're interesting enough. And often they're either quite binary, you know, either you're gonna fix it or you're not. They're, if they're already broken like this, they're probably gonna remain broken. So any little bit you do is a boon, especially if you can get them working. So, sorry, I just distracted counting the screws there. I want to make sure that six came out and six do not go a missing. So it's a bit of a rattly, a rattly keyboard on this one. Gonna try to get the lid off a bit. I noticed there's, it has actually kind of come away a bit already. So I don't know what's going on here. Try and have a look inside it. It's weird. There's a definitely a bit of PCB material here. Flexi trying to come away with this back cover, so that's a bit worrying. Can't imagine any school kid would be that patient. Whoa, okay, dokie. Okay, dokie, big in the poke. Wow, I'm, uh, I'm quite interested in this, and I'm gonna tell you why it's sort of fascinating me. Uh, not just that it's got loads of liquidy, horrible stuff all over it, which I'm gonna wipe, look at that. Um, but I'm very interested in the construction of the actual sort of CPU. Now I have to admit, I haven't really opened any of these types of calculators. I kind of like, I can't even remember ever doing it ever. Oh look, there you go. That's actually, this is actually the contact point for the uh, key. So the keys actually push through, but it's the back cover bit that actually makes the contact. So they were a bit dirty. So it's nice to get them clean. They were really damp. I'm going to wipe this down again because clearly a battery has just exploded itself all over these contact points and that's going to cause a lot of problems. In fact, I can see where it's corroded some of them. So these might kind of be dead. I mean, if they are, you know, we might be able to get it on, but if, even if we get it on, some keys might not work. And I don't have any conductive paint, but uh, let's, just, let's just see. If I did have conductive paint, there's more of a chance we could get it working. So the whole, so the reason I've, uh, sort of intrigued though. You see this construction here and I'm going to zoom right in because you might have seen it in one of the previous videos I sort of just did where they've done this and this is the actual piece of silicon of the CPU and you can see it's attached to a flexible circuit and you see these little legs? That's the wires, the gold wires that are just sort of placed at the bottom of that unit, that chip. Um, and you don't normally see that because normally they'll be encased in a sort of blob material. Look, you've got the battery contacts coming off here and look, they're just touching this sort of circuit. So the whole circuit is flexible. It's sort of folded round to the actual LCD. I mean, this is a marvel of construction. Um, I, it's hard to, you know, if you're not really used to seeing these things, it's hard to appreciate this for what it is. I mean, it's an entire circuit board chip, everything printed and made in the sort of quickest, cheapest way possible. And it's, it's a sort of marvel of mass production, really. Very, very cool. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a look in other calculators now to see if they've done the same thing, because it's really quite amazing. So you can see here, there's some corrosion on the layers. It's very difficult, but you see there's, the tracks are generally silver but here you've got some that are black because something's got in between these two layers and that thing that's got in there is leaky battery. So you can see I'm just pushing my tweezers between the layers. Um, yeah, that does not look too good. And the reason is you can't solder to do all these things. So that's gonna be a bit of a pain, but maybe if we're lucky, if we're just ever so lucky, it's not, you know, a problem. It's like the battery's leaked. 
it's kind of caused a bit of corrosion, but it's not terminal. That, that's going to be our hope. Let's wipe the battery down. Let's just turn this around and I'm going to put my finger here and I'm going to probably put my finger here because without this, it's not going to make contact to the battery. Ah, right. Yeah. Before the uh, screen actually flipped out, it was working briefly. The screen may well be working by the way here, but you can't see it because we don't have a polarizing filter. And I'm just gonna have a quick, look, ever so quick, yes. Huzzah. Here's my bit of a raggedy old polarizer material. I don't know if you can see it, but look, there you go. If I hold the bit of polarite, there you go. You can see it's on, like magic. It is actually kind of working. So all I'm gonna do now at this point though, is I'm just gonna sort of flip it around and actually just reassemble it just in case it doesn't need any further work. But before I do that, I'm just going to brush down the back. Make sure there's any, there is detritus in there, bits of old cloth actually, the uh, thing I was just using to wipe it off. It's clean the area. And I can see some liquid in there, which is probably battery goo. So I'm just going to use this brush because the brush will just wick it away a bit. We're going to have to accept we're probably not going to get all of it out. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. Let me just try one more bit. I think we've got the bulk of it though. Turn around. There we go. Let's pop that in. Where'd my other battery go? Lost a battery. Right on. So I'm not going to do the screws up just yet. I'm just going to hold it there. It's really, it's kind of hard to see actually at certain angles. I forget how sort of bad these things are. Um, it looks like a kind of corrupted e-screen to be honest with you. I'm pushing like off. It's not doing anything. Not even convinced it's seeing the buttons. Although I'm seeing the screen kind of change a bit when I'm touching things up. Let's have another look. We, we do have a, Houston, we have a problem here. So one option we have, which is a little bit nasty, I'm gonna say it's nasty, is you can see this PCB is actually held in. I'm gonna clean my tweezers for this. We need some clean tweezers. The PCB is actually held in by some melty blobs. I think that's the technology. You've got a melty blob here, 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 and here, and here. There's another one. Um, if we remove those melty blobs, there is a possibility we can remove this membrane, or let me just see if I can get it over the melty blobs. Yeah, look, gently, gently, gently catchy melty. Um, and if I can do that, you can take the membrane out and see if we can clean both sides of it. That's probably as best as I can do. That's beyond that. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to salvage this calculator. The reason being that whole technology, I mean, even, even any calculator, let's be honest, any electronics device like this to fix them if they're broken is pretty much almost an impossibility. So one where you've got everything, even just on a printed flexi PCB that you can't even solder onto a repair, you're really, you're really sort of pushing it at that point. So that's the whole calculator there. Look at that. So from thus to that, and if I turn it over, look, you can see. Woohoo, it's so naked now. Let's put that aside, we don't need this. Obviously, a sort of wooden undulating surface of my bench isn't necessarily the best thing for this, but it'll have to do right now. So we're gonna to try to just have a look at the back of the PCB and I can see certain crustiness on it. I'm gonna to try to zoom in, see if you can see the crustiness too, but it's sort of over here. You can see it probably on the camera, sort of whitish, powdery-ish stuff. Even though this is the contact side, I kind of feel I wanna clean this side because it's effectively a double-sided circuit and the uh, it's printed on the flexi on both sides. So I've got, again, some flux cleaner um, just before I, Spray that, I'm gonna use, oh, I don't know, this YouTube pad. Thanks YouTube, by the way, for sending me that. Nice YouTube pad and pen, but it's got this plastic, plastic cover, so it's gonna probably be a touch bit better. There you go. Then I don't want the um, fluxy stuff to soak through, the flux cleaner to soak through to my workbench, so this is gonna be fine. So just a little brush on, 
it's got a tiny brush on the end of this. And you can see I'm just applying it as a fine layer all over. Now, I'm kind of thinking there's probably a danger that if I rub hard enough, I'll just rub off the carbon that's printed onto this. So <laughs> just watch now, this one wipe might be enough to kill the whole calculator forever. No, it didn't come with it. Good. And that's nice, that's real nice. Yep, yeah, that sort of, that did come off quite cleanly actually. I'm just gonna wipe the other side. It snagged there, ever so slightly it snagged and I was sort of slightly uh, harrowing because I thought it was gonna, gonna sort of um, fold it in half. You can see there's a, a bit of filth there coming off on the pad. See there's light and dark. So this is there is some dirt coming off this. Hopefully it's dirt, not just the sort of carbon material. So I'm just going to do one more time and then I think we're just going to have to try it. I'm going to go a bit higher this time, right up to the LCD, almost to the CPU. Let's do the back and then we'll do the front again. I'm just, it worries me about all the devices that I might have in my loft, by the way, that have could have batteries in them. And I'm thinking like original Game Boys. Yeah, I've got a blue one. Right, now be careful. I, I, I can see that that darkness that's coming off here really is starting to be some of the conductive material. So all joking aside, I don't really want to rub away the actual PCB. <laughs> but I think that's about as clean as one could possibly hope to get it without going too nuts. go so let's uh, zoom back out let's get this back in the case <sighs> just blew off a little bit of dust that's there now I'm not gonna be so bothered about a tiny bit of dust in there now I think our priorities have to just be this working now hopefully this working so if we can uh, get this working I'm sure we can go and get that piece of any piece of dust out there still a bit of white crusty stuff here though um, I'm almost reluctant to sort of work on that anymore without knowing the circuit. That might be legitimate tracking and how that should be. So I'm just gonna have to have to roll with that. Can't um don't have a circuit diagram for this or a spare count to compare to. Ah, it's nice that these uh, plastic things actually do just push over. Again, you need some good tweezers if you're doing this. Don't try to just do it with your nails. Ah, oh, this one's being a bit awkward. Come on, get in there. I did use my nails there, but don't uh, you don't do it at home. That was kind of really horrible. Look at this one, let's see if we can get this one in. Oh, that one snapped right in. Any more for any more. Just this one here. There we go, and one here. Bending, it's warping, it's not being happy, but it's in now. Good, it's in, it's happy. Get the batteries in. Again, battery contacts look reasonably clean. I don't think there's a problem with the battery contacts. Although, you know, I like to do a little, little roll around, a little roll around. Oh, hang on, that's looking good. That's a good looking screen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Woo -hoo. Ah, it did go off then, but uh, Oh, that's just that's just because there's that contact there. Tell you what, let's pop the screws in. And then I'm gonna have to ask myself if this doesn't work, am I gonna take the six screws out to change the batteries or am I just gonna say, sorry batteries, you're in there forever. Yeah, I probably will retrieve the batteries, I guess. So at Billy Sastard one I believe, that's your Twitter handle. Thank you again for these. I'm going to um, probably leave batteries in when I send you back some of these calculators. Um, you know, with my compliments, enjoy the batteries because I don't, um, I kind of feel sometimes with these things that once you put the batteries and it's working, it's best just to leave them alone. If you just sort of take them apart, there's that chance that they're gonna just blow up and stop working and I don't want to risk that so I'm probably just going to leave those in for you. Last screw, let's get in there. 
that's nice. So, this off though, is it supposed to go off or what? Auto power off. I know it says auto power off, but what's the off for? Right, so let's just go through systematically. So off doesn't seem to do anything. It doesn't even make the bloody screen flitter, flicker, which worries me, but let's forget that. That does something, that does something, that does something, that does. I can see an ever so slight flicker. Don't know if you can see it at home. That does something, that does something. This one doesn't, I'm not sure it's doing anything. Yeah, I'm seeing a very slight flicker, very slight flicker on the hyper bu -bu -bu. I can't even remember that is. Cosine, tan, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that, 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 All seem to be working apart from off, which I'm not convinced is doing anything. And what was it, this one? which is definitely doing something. But I don't know how you make it do something. <laughs> so there, that was it. The Casio FX82L recovered. And you can probably use that technique in any other sort of calculator you've got really, if you want to sort of give it a go. Um, just pop it off, just be a bit gentle. By the way, the thing I did use in that was this Flu Electrolube Flux Clean PCB cleaning solvent. It's from uh, probably comp companies like Farnell or CPC sell this. Um, it says be careful though, it says it's an irritant, it's highly flammable, dangerous for the environment, all those good things. I'm not really sure what's in it, but I'll tell you what, when you... It smells very much like label remover and label remover, ah, label remover, like this one here. And they both contain, I do believe, some sort of compounds that you get like in lemons or something because it's a very citrusy smell. Might be chemical, it might be naturally extracted, I don't know, but be careful with it. Uh, if you've got any comments, please leave them down below. If you've liked this video, please uh, think about clicking share or like or subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, keep on calculating. Ah, 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 wait, wait. Bloody hell. Luckily, this time, I didn't forget. Thanks for watching. Thank you.